The other day, a pub landlord, who I would guess to be in his late 40s or early 50s, turned to me at the bar and said, What will you have, young man? It was meant well, I assumed, but I felt the little flash of irritation that patronising phrase has always provoked in me. The implication is that as a young man, you're not actually a man. You're a sort of over-promoted boy. And I'm 37, for goodness sake. I thought people would have finally stopped saying it by now. This all flashed through my mind without my really noticing it, until, having served me, the landlord turned to the next customer and said, And what can I get for you, young lady? The woman next to me was 65 if she was a day, and I realised to my horror that I have pushed through. People had stopped saying it to me, and now they've started again. What I had taken as a patronising reference to my obvious youth was in fact an extravagant compliment. It was no longer the man part that was in doubt, it was the young. It turns out there are two periods in your life when jolly men call you young man. The first starts at about ten, when it's a hilarious joke because you're not really a man. And the second, into which I'd just been inducted, starts at about thirty-seven, and increasingly becomes a hilarious joke because you're not really young. Culminating in your eighties and nineties, when the nice girl in the care home chirps, All right, young man, let's see who's going to eat some porridge. The thing is, I still think of myself as a young man. Perhaps I'd be more resigned to relinquishing the status if I was all set up with a house and a family and a Volvo, but I'm not. The patterns of my life are more or less the same as they were ten years ago. Maybe being a freelance comedian has arrested my development. Perhaps putting on wigs and doing funny voices for a living has the same effect on the human as continuous submersion in water on a salamander. That is, keeping it forever in a pre-adult state, known in salamanders as an axolotl and in humans as a David Mitchell. Except no. It obviously doesn't, because I'm surrounded by comedians of my age and younger, brandishing wedding rings and car keys and progeny. The first time I remember having this unsettling feeling was when I was about 15, and it occurred to me that I'd already left it too late to win Wimbledon. It had never been a burning priority, but watching it on TV throughout my childhood, it had occasionally occurred to me that it would be a cool thing to do one day. I made a mental note to listen out for when they said at school, anyone thinking about trying to win Wimbledon should sign up next to the drinking fountain by Thursday lunchtime or have a word with Mr Revel. And then one day I realised that it was too late. Even if I'd started training right at that moment, the guys I'd be up against already had five to ten years start on me and I would never catch up. That ship had already sailed. And over the next 20 years, it has been joined by a vast armada of other ships, cargoed with things that I don't particularly want to do, but now couldn't even if I wanted to. I will never be a concert violinist. I will never be a chess grandmaster. I will never go to the moon. I could, theoretically, still climb Mount Everest, become a billionaire or be prime minister. I don't want to do any of those things, though. I want to win Wimbledon. On the moon.